And, you know, I had this coworker in my last job that, you know, one time we're talking outside of lunch and he's telling me, he's like, this is going to be my 60th anniversary with my wife. I said, awesome. How'd you guys meet? He's like, literally, we met uh, at a mall. I asked her um, to go on a date. The date went well. And we married that day. So this guy has been <laughs> in a 60-year um, marriage. And he only knew his wife for one day when he asked her to um, be his wife. See, that is incredibly stupid, isn't it? It's incredibly stupid, but like it worked for the guy. I mean, they're in a happy marriage and uh, I mean, they don't get into too much fights. Like, I mean, w what's your it opinion the on that? Way. Doesn't make, it doesn't mean the decision wasn't stupid. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like buying a lottery ticket and winning, except right. you know, the chances of winning are higher than like almost 0%, of course. But the act of doing it was still stupid, regardless of the outcome. Yeah. See, that's one thing people don't understand, okay? Where the people conflate outcomes with the decision. For example, if I give you two choices, okay? I give you one choice, you have the chance to win a million dollars, but the chance is like 1%. Mm -hmm. Or you have the chance to win $500,000, but the chance is 50%. Which one would you pick? Okay, so for the million dollars, is that 1% chance? Yeah, for a million dollars, it's one percent, and for the five hundred thousand dollars, it's a what chance? Fifty percent. Uh, the fifty percent. Yeah, exactly. But now imagine this: you picked the one with the fifty percent, and then you lose; you get nothing. And someone else, you know, picks the million dollars, and they get the million dollars. So one percent, like they're the lucky one. Then they start bragging and all that stuff. But was their decision smart? And who who made the smarter choice? But regardless of the outcome, the smarter choice was you because the expected value of your decision was 250,000, that is 50% of 100K, mm -hmm. versus for theirs, it was just $10,000, like 1% of a million. So their decision was garbage, like it was very unwise, unwise to pick this. But just because they won, they feel like, okay, I was a smart one, I picked the right decision, but really they didn't. Yeah. They were stupid, well, but it I worked. <laughs> I will pref preface it with this. The guy said to me once we're done with the interaction, by the way, uh, I don't recommend you do the same thing uh, because what you're describing, Harsh, is, or what I'm describing with this guy is a game of Russian roulette. Do you know that game? Yeah, I am aware of it. Yeah, and it's like, it's like let's say it's, a, for the most part, an empty chamber of uh, a gun, but there's one bullet in there, and you get to pull the trigger on your head um, and there's let's say nine chances that you're right but one of the trigger pulls can take your life but let's say let, let's you know even add the stakes some more would you play this game of Russian roulette uh, just two pulls of the trigger for a chance to win 50 billion dollars 50 billion mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it for money like there are things I would play the game for but money is not one of them okay what's the uh, What's an incentive that you'll be happy with? So I'm. A, I think Russian roulette is one sixth the chance of death, right? The what? One, one sixth would be the chance of death. Yeah, we, we, we could play around with those numbers. So one by six. I don't know. See, this is one of those questions where it's hard to answer unless a legitimate offer is presented. Mm -hmm. Like where a legitimate offer is presented, then I might agree to something. But I know it's not out of the question for me. Like, I would play the game for some reward, but I can tell you the reward is in money. The reward could be some kind of cultural change I want to see in the world or the establishment of some institution that I want to see uh, or things of that sort. But I wouldn't do it for money. I would do it for some other thing, but I'm not against the game. Like I would play it for some reward. I can, I can tell you that much. Okay. But to know what reward I would play it for, a legitimate offer needs to be presented. It's a lot like, you know, will you cheat on a girl you like or not? Well, you can't, you don't know that until you get a legitimate <laughs> offer <laughs> and then you find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're open to some sort of these risks if the turnout could be very monumental. Yes. 
And I think it was with, like that with my coworker, man, where he's just like, well, let's take the risk. Um, And, you know, his thing, like the win, where you're saying you wouldn't play for money, for him, like he would play for love. So in his context, um, you know, he plays some Russian roulette, Harsh. And <laughs> he, he um, got one of the empty chambers in a good way. Yeah, I would say that in his case, the Russian roulette was more like five bullets in the gun and only one empty space. <laughs> 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 and he got the right one. <laughs> but yeah, this is like playing Russian roulette for something like $10, you know. Like, why would you do that? For ten dollars, <laughs> <laughs> I heard a lot of these stories, man. I mean, of very strange occurrences of how someone met their uh, significant other. But I would say that was one of the strangest. Like you meet someone that day and you get married that day, um, insane. Um, so how big is arranged marriages uh, in the? India uh, like is that still a thing or is it more outdated H how's the philosophy with that I would say about 90% of marriages are arranged marriages like maybe more 95 96% really I wasn't yes, expecting in, a number that high yeah so in cities for example it is a bit like 20% are not arranged marriages like love marriages are more common in cities mm -hmm. because it's more open culture but if you go to interiors of India Almost every marriage is an arranged marriage. Wow. Like in my family, there's only one person who didn't get arranged marriage. And I can like give you 50 examples. Like in my, like, you know, my entire extended family, mm -hmm. there's only one couple who didn't get arranged marriage who got a love marriage and they got divorced. Ooh. And incidentally, that's the only divorce in my family. Why do you think that kind of stuff happens? Like, what, what do you, do you mean? Think, what do you think? Why do you think like, arranged marriages typically have a lower divorce rate than love marriages. Would you say it's because the family is invested as well? There are two reasons. One, you tend to... See, when you get an arranged marriage, you think of it as a business decision, right? Mm -hmm. You think for factors outside the woman too, like her culture, how her family is, how she was raised, and, you know, and things like cooking skills and everything too, up to you. But there are also broader factors like you already discussed how you want to live and you expect things not to be perfect but mm. with a love marriage where you like the girl once you are once you get feelings for someone you tend to discount their flaws you tend to overlook potential deal breakers and just because you overlook something doesn't mean it's gone and when you're living together they all show up you know, once mm -hmm. like, love is like just an emotion, right? And at some point it starts fading away. The romance kind of like goes away and then you're left with what's real. Mm -hmm. And in love marriages sometimes, and this is from what I understand, that the love eventually dilutes a bit and then you're left with someone you don't consider compatible or your expectations are so high or her expectations are so high that even though everything is fine, it doesn't feel fine because you want something better. And I think that's kind of the reason why a lot of love marriages break away. Mm -hmm. Like in arranged marriage, you don't love the girl when you marry her. Like you build your love over time. And it's like, it is a more lasting thing because you don't expect perfection. You don't expect things to be well. You know the other person is somewhat of a stranger. And mm -hmm. you have to adjust. Right. Versus the love marriage, you expect things to be a fairy tale. Interesting breakdown. And when are you gonna have life math money relationship advice <laughs> added into your blog or something? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very um, good breakdown because with love, I mean, I'm trying to find a good analogy. Would you say it's a very similar analogy to what you're talking about with business? You know how some people, they'll start a business uh, honestly built through uh, love. Like Vince McMahon is a good guy. Like his dad um, like engulfed him with world wrestling entertainment his entire life. So Vince loved it. And from there, he developed that killer work ethic versus someone who, you know, started a boring business. He didn't enjoy anything about it. Uh, let's say a steel company 
It's a very like mundane thing that he has no affinity for. But over time, he worked on it. He grew it. He started to make money. And once he started to make money, uh, now he started to fall in love with the business. Would you say that's a similar analogy with what you're saying with love marriage versus arranged marriage? I will not say that. I will say a better analogy would be something like picking a business partner, okay? Let's say you had two options, Arman. One option is you can, you know, you have a business and then you're thinking through who might, who the best partner would be for this business. Who would be the best co-founder for Arman Incorporated? And who will provide the best skills or who has the best synergies with you? Or you can pick your nephew. Mm -hmm. Which option is better? Explain my nephew. Does my nephew have any skills or is it just because um, he's my nephew? He's a nephew. You like him. You want to help him. No, no, no. I'm probably going to pick the guy with better skills. It's somewhat like that. With love marriage, You, it's like your nephew. You know, you love them. You like them. And you don't care about their flaws as much because you feel like they're going to get better over time. And, you know, things can be improved and skills can be acquired. I like this person, whatever. Mm hmm Versus the arranged marriage is more like being more rational, picking the right person, trying to find the right you know match, mm -hmm. and trying to find the right compatibility. So yeah, I, I would say that would be a better analogy. And like you said, a business with someone you vetted would work better than a business with your nephew. Yeah, I think for the most part, uh, unless like you're trying to make this a family business. Oftentimes, starting a business with a family member or a super, super close friend, it's not always the best uh, because there are certain times when uh, things become too informal. And every now and then you need a little bit of formality in place so people understand uh, the higher mission of the business. But let's say it's a super close friend. It's like mm, the guy wants to work sometimes, doesn't want to work the other times. That's a problem. But it's like, how can I constructively criticize the person without the friendship deteriorating? So I'm not normally um, someone that's over here trying to build too much um, uh, businesses with friends. Um, what's your state on that? Like, do you build any of your side businesses with your friends or do you normally keep it friends or friends? Do you remember our discussion on a Rockefeller quote? Do you remember the quote? I remember the fundamental essence of it, where you're like, uh, the friendship built on business is better than a business built on friendship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so that is my take on it. A friendship based on business is better than a business based on friendship. Mm -hmm. okay. Because your friendships at your rate, your business keeps your friendship together. Yeah, this is this is a good analogy with the the marriage thing that you were are bringing up. Have you ever been at the end of the day? A marriage is a relationship that is supposed to yield some things for one party and some other things for the other party. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, a love marriage that doesn't understand that is less likely to succeed. I'm it's glad not... we're bringing this up because the concept of arranged marriage, like in the US, in the West, people are aware of it, but it's not too common in practice. So it's good that we're breaking down the angles of it. It would be impossible to have it in the West mm -hmm. simply because the variability in the West is so high. And you could say that to a large extent, even in modern India, it's breaking down, right? Mm -hmm. Fewer people every year are getting arranged marriage like as a percentage. So the reason is that the variability is increasing and society and culture are breaking down, you could say. Like earlier, like you could get married in a day, like you could meet your wife, arrange marriage and get married the next day or like in a week. Mm -hmm. But now that's not possible because earlier you could trust her. You could trust that she was a virgin. She came from like, you knew the family. She would have household skills. She understands her roles. She would have to play as a wife and you understand your roles that you're making enough money to pay for everything and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's not possible today. Like today you meet someone and next day you can't get married to them because you just don't know anything about them. They could be completely crazy. They could be a feminist. They could be a terrorist. You know, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. So I would say variability is so high because exposure is so high right now that yeah. 
the system of arranged marriage has to break down because you have to know your partner a bit more to get married to them. You can't rely on society and culture anymore to give you a good partner or to guarantee a good or high probability of the partner being, you know, in good spirit. Okay. I could see that because what you're trying to say is that the more variables that are introduced, the less likelihood of people attaining arranged marriages or an arranged marriage being successful. It increases the risk. For example, like if you go back 30 years in India, like say when my father got married in whatever year it was, I don't remember. What would it be like? Like you meet a girl and you could be 99% sure this girl is going to be, well, she knows her roles in marriage. She knows that she's going to have to cook and take care of the house. You, you would know your roles in marriage. That is, you're going to have to provide money for the house, go mm -hmm. out and work. You would know, you would like be fairly confident that the girl is a virgin she's never like fuck around too much or you know and you, you could be fairly confident of her culture because you know her family you know her upbringing because you know the family and you knew how educated or how little educated she was and you knew you could like because society was stabler you could be fairly certain this girl would be of a certain type of, of a certain way of thinking and would be are brought up to behave in a certain way and the same applies to guys like the girl could know okay so this guy is not going to abuse me he's not going to beat me up he's not going to drink because he's from xyz culture but now all of those things are no longer present where if you get married in a day to someone they might turn out to be say a raging alcoholic or a drug addict you might find that out too late or they might have like a crazy ass temper mm -hmm. so i would say the variability in people have increased because the degrees of freedom have increased and that makes arranged marriages less you would say more risky or less safe because you just don't know what you might be getting into like the risk is too high would you also say like there needs to be a baked in level of stigma for divorces for arranged marriages to work because i'm sure even back in the days harsh uh, there were people that were getting arranged marriages and let's say one guy like you know everything else is about him is good but one thing is you know he has a drinking problem um and he whenever he gets drunk let's say he hits the woman maybe that's something that existed like even 30 to 40 years ago but the person did not uh, they didn't break up because there was a baked in level of stigma in society do you think that that baked in level of stigma negative stigma for divorce needs to be baked in for arranged marriages to work out because nowadays like if something is not working out you could divorce really quickly uh so that's another reason i don't see the arranged marriage thing working out because it's too easy to divorce but what does that have to do with arranged marriage or love marriage that has to do with marriage in general right exactly and and that's what i'm trying to say like do you see arranged marriages working out if uh you know divorce is more normalized yeah, I would see it working out quite well, even if divorce was quite normalized. I will say that if divorce is normalized, it by definition kind of shows that marriages itself, like in general, are not working out. Because mm. divorce becomes generalized when it's a common thing. And if it's a common thing, that means a large percentage of marriages are ending in divorce, which means the entire system or the institution itself is failing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is like, if the divorce rate is high, that means divorce is normalized. Because if it wasn't normalized, then it wouldn't be high. Right. Interesting. So it is a bit of a... It's like crossing the chasm in a way. Where it being a stigmatizing factor keeps it from being normalized. But once... As the rate of divorce increases, the, the factor of stigma goes away which makes rewards even more of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's like crossing the chasm. It's like going from like logarithmic growth to exponential growth. <laughs> Only you would bring some math connections into <laughs> relationships. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call Just you life math money. Life math money. 